You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. The Dating Den with Zach Schlein. How to know if he's worth your time in three minutes or less. Ladies, hello and welcome to the dating den into my little den today. I have Zach Schlein, whose mother calls him Zachary when she is mad at him. But most important, Zach is the co-founder and CEO of a video speed dating app, which is super exciting, called Filter Off. It's been Pre, uh, featured in pubs such as the New York Times, the BBC, and it hit number one on Product Hunt. Very cool. And before this, Zach ran and sold the dating blog Top Romp, which covered dating hacks and apps for the modern daters. So D- Zach knows dating. He's a TEDx speaker, and his passions lie in technology, health, and creating authentic connection, which is what we're all about here. And uh, he's a traveler. He loves to listen to podcasts. I wonder if you listen to ours. Zach. Uh, (laughs) And he loves to work out. He's basically my ideal man. Uh, Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Marnie. Uh, Did you ever listen to our show before you were on it? I'm uh, actually a big fan. Woohoo! I love it. Okay. So listen, um, online dating, video speed dating. I mean, gosh, the last, it's almost been two years. It's just been insane, right? For, um, for online dating dating and dating, uh, innovation or really, um, what, like, what do you notice? Like how, how has online dating changed since, uh, we entered this pandemic world? What are people doing, thinking, feeling? Yeah, I think the biggest change is being comfortable with video. I mean, we're on zoom all the time, uh, speaking with our friends and loved ones and for work. Now going on a video chat with a complete stranger is no big deal. And just to put that in comparison, pre-pandemic, asking someone to go on a video chat with you, most people actually said no. Now it's actually unusual if someone says no. That's so true. It's really interesting because, you know, when the pandemic first, you know, sort of started happening, we had to really like convince our clients and they were like, oh, that feels so awkward. And then there were all these like technology questions, especially for our listeners that are older and they're kind of digital immigrants, so to speak. Um, and so now it's become like so, um, so commonplace. And do you think that since the vaccine and things like that, that people have been just going back to that coffee date or are they still pretty much doing like video? Yeah, so in terms of kind of the online dating process, video still is now, since the pandemic, and I I believe will now always remain going forward, video is fundamental to get to that coffee date. So it's just part of the online dating experience now. And like, what do you think is working about that? I mean, I do agree with you that it's here to stay. Why do you think that is? Well, it's here to stay because, A, we're now very comfortable, uh, with the technology such as zoom given we use it all the time or jumping on a quick facetime so it's just now part of our daily routine so there is no like discomfort like what is this how do i use this and i I think too like what my clients and listeners are saying is that it's so much more efficient right because number one like if someone says no you're like what (laughs) Um, I think it's really interesting too. like people who are looking for like really low hanging fruit, you know, like they just want to hook up like some of them are like, no, I don't want to do that. Or technology is too hard or let just give me your number. Is it do you think it's helping kind of uh, get rid of like catfishing and people that are just kind of looking to hook up? Is it is it making it easy to filter? I mean, your company's called filter off. Um, is it easy to filter people now because you can you can use this as the first step? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think efficiency is a big thing. Yeah, and then what I hear a lot, especially for women, is around safety. Yeah, and the ability to jump on a quick video call, 
even if it's just a few minutes just to see if there's a fit, uh, they really get an idea of who that person is, if they have chemistry. And the reality is you only need a few minutes to see if you click. Obviously, you could have a prolonged conversation, hour plus, to get to know the person. But in the very beginning, it only requires just a couple minutes. And let me ask you this, because I also have had clients uh, have this situation. So I want to see what your what your take on it is. So a lot of the ladies that were like asking for video, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever it is. And the guys are like, yeah, sure, I'll call you now. And they're like, uh, you know, I'm like in the gym or I'm, you know, or I'm um, just took my makeup off and I'm, you know, like watching a a movie in bed, you know. And so they will say like, no, I want to set it up more like a date. Right. Or that's the intention. So do you feel like that is also becoming more commonplace rather than just sure, like, you know, just FaceTime me? (laughs) Yeah, I think men don't always think about that and they're like yeah let's just jump on a quick video chat and like you said they're just for the woman they it just may not be a good time and it is i think the more people video chat and continue to video chat it will be just become a norm and more men will understand to ask when works for you versus like hey let's hop on one right now because it's usually doesn't always work out. I had a client once who, you know, she agreed, you know, she's like, okay, fine. And she is like, the guy literally like looked like he was out for a run and had just stopped. <laughs> he was like out of breath. He was sweaty. She was like, it wasn't his best look. So I think like it's be- what I hear you saying is like, we can use video like actually for a date, not just to like, let me make sure you're not, you know, um, a catfish, which brings me to to this whole idea about like meeting on video and making it a really, really good first connection, like with filter off and how you're kind of coaching your, your users, like how do you make a great video connection that works? Yeah. So I think the, the first thing is to join an event that, uh, you're interested in. So if it's, let's say, a runner's lover's date night and you love to run and you go on these maybe eight video dates in less than an hour, talk about and ask about running. Ask them what they've done recently. Share about your passions. I mean, I understand it's a short amount of time, but be curious. And I think that's that's a really uh, important thing uh, to do and just to get a vibe and see if you and the other person connect. And so, so is that how, so is that how filter off works? So like you find an event, like kind of like meetups used to be back in the day where you would go with a certain comment and then you get to have an opportunity to just kind of like efficiently do these, um, these speed dates. Yeah. So there's two main components of filter off and filter off is available on Android, iOS and web, and it's free to use. Uh, so there's virtual speed dating events. An event can be a city-based in a city-based event, like an LA date night, New York or London date night. We're all around the world, um, but there's also like affinity, interest-based events as well that you can join. Once you RSVP to one of these events, an hour beforehand, you confirm your attendance, and then we filter off. We'll start scheduling your dates based off your age and gender preference, and then you go on these video speed dates. And at the end of each date, it'll ask you whether you like each other or not. And then you go on to your next date. At the end of the event, you'll see if you have any matches where you can then message or video call. So that's how events work. And we also allow users and organizers to create their own events as well for their own uh, communities. Then we have this matchmaking service. That's wait. I want to hear about that. But first of all, I just when you said that, I was like, uh, this sounds amazing because I remember I went to a few speed dating events when I was single. First of all, I'd walk in and I would like sort of see who's there. And I'm not going to lie, the early days, I would like totally be judgmental, right? And I'd be like, oh, God. So I already, already like my energy was low, right? Like waiting for Mm -hmm. somebody who I thought was my type to walk in. What I love about this is like you have an opportunity to like totally prepare, you know, be in your highest energy. It sort of doesn't matter who else is there because this is just your opportunity to go on the dates that the app sets up for you. Um so talk about efficient. Sounds like freaking amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think what's really cool about it is speed dating in person is difficult. And like you said, it's very easy to be judgmental. Like who looking at everyone around, then you maybe 
high anxiety. Am I wearing the right thing? Are people looking at me? Yeah. When you're able to do a, when you, when we're, when you're able to attend a virtual speed dating event, you can do so in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to have that feeling of like, am I being judged? It's a one-on-one experience. It's very, very different um, from that respect. Which feels safe and easy. And how long, so when you're thinking about like, you're going to, whether you use filter off or you're just scheduling things on your own, what's a great length that you think a first video chat kind of thing should be? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it really depends on each person. I'll share for myself, like at least for the first date, I like to keep it short. So I have an out and that's why on filter off, we designed it where our events default at three minute video dates. As an organizer, you can actually adjust the length of your video dates. So you can make it all the way from three minutes to 10 minute dates. Okay. Uh, But if you're using another app and you agree to jump on a video date, it can get tricky if you jump on that video date and you realize two minutes in, you don't want to be here. How do you have that out? So, I mean, what I've what I've shared is, hey, I have another call like coming up in like 15 minutes. Can we hop on a quick video chat? And then obviously, if the video date goes well, you can say, hey, let's just keep chatting. I could like brush up the call. But if it's not going well, at least you have an easy out. Like, hey, I have another meeting or I have a meeting in 15 minutes. Because that's the worst when you feel like you're stuck on a video date and you don't know how to get out. Totally. And when you're on those video dates, what do you think makes a great connection? Like how should our listeners show up to make the most of the opportunities? Yeah, I think like you nailed in the beginning, like presenting yourself well. Um, I think that's more so probably something that men don't always remember versus women. But um, but also just like your camera angle. Um, the nice thing with filter off, you can take it from a computer so you don't have to like hold your phone the whole time. Awesome. Um, but if you have like FaceTime and you're using another dating app, uh, you could always exchange your personal information, jump on like FaceTime on your computer, um, but also just like the lighting, the angles, but just being curious, just getting to know them. And I think the best dates, video dates are the ones that doesn't feel like an interview, but just kind of flowing um, on filter off. We do have some icebreaker questions, like some games that you can play. So if you really don't know what to ask, you literally just ask these questions um, and really get to know someone in a short amount of time. I love that. When we do uh, live virtual events, when it first starts, we put people into pairs and we, we do an icebreaker kind of thing. And there are these three things to talk about. And people always say like, they really got to know something about that person because when you have that kind of structure and there's a container with that intention, um, people are so much more authentic. It's way better than like, oh, how long have you been on the app? How long have you, you know, when was your last relationship? Because those things sound like an interview and that's just so not engaging, right? Yeah. And I think like, for example, at home, I have a a card game. It's like table topics and it's literally just a list of different questions. And I've played it with friends like before an event or I've even used it on dates. And And it's fun. You get to know the person. You can kind of learn their values uh, share stories and kind of just get a sense of who this person is um, through all these different questions. That's awesome. So and t- before we talk about matchmaking, I know that you talk about people branding themselves, right? Like how do you really express your authentic self and how you and how you brand yourself on online? What do, what do you recommend? How do you talk about that? Yeah, I think one thing that I often seen from or see from an an online presence is everyone wants to kind of be everything. But when you really like think about it, like what is it that you really enjoy and what are people potentially paying you for um, or how you want to be? Often it's like very focused and niche. And uh, and sometimes people forget that having like a really specific niche, yeah, it's specific, but there's a massive audience for that niche. So the more specific, oftentimes the better. And I think even like with Filter Off, right, our focus is video first. And our focus is also on community. Like that's what we want to be the best at and strive to be at the best. So as just a an individual with an online presence, thinking about what it is, what communities you serve or types of people and what you specialize in, I think that's 
uh, the best way of quote unquote like marketing yourself and having a really strong online presence. I love this because there's so I, I've coached people on their profiles and they're so vague because they're trying to get everybody like, oh, I don't want to turn off that guy. Or what if that guy doesn't like that? I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sort of like, you know, first of all, it only takes one. Right. And there are a lot of people who are looking for that one thing. And your time is best served by speaking, by branding yourself, by speaking to the people that are actually a good connection, not just freaking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> who has for time? Sure. Who has time for that? So talk talk to me about the community piece because I think you know a lot of people realize that during the pandemic, being uh, having space and time it, it was great, and also um, it feels really isolating, uh, especially when you're single. Um, so how do you guys uh, leverage online dating to like create community? Yeah, so what we noticed were different sorts of organizations would reach out to us and say, hey, we want to host our own events for our communities and members. So now we've really transitioned the app to be very focused on the community organizer. And what I mean by that is, let's say you run, let's say, a Facebook community, and this Facebook community is for runners. Uh, you can literally host a runner uh, Facebook a community event on filter off uh, you could add a private code so it's just for your own community you could even have kick it off with a introductory video you could even sell tickets in the app itself so you could bring in revenue but it's really for your community so our communities we've now run over 5,000 virtual speeding events and some of the organizations have hosted events for like jewish facebook groups we have a facebook community subtle curry dating meet you uh, different nonprofits around the world. So it, it's really awesome to help communities uh, grow and give their members a really fun experience. That's amazing. I've been part of so many personal development groups on Facebook or just even as a graduate of a program. And they're always like, how can we, you know, how can I meet somebody who's like-minded, right? Who's into personal development or who is, um, into the same sort of lifestyle that I am, like entrepreneurs or, or I, you know, people who are getting getting ready or are retired. So I think that's 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 so so amazing. Um, so when you you think about that uh, community idea, how should people think about getting involved in these in these communities? Is it like searching out these virtual groups and then? setting something up like a filter off event or do you think you just start going on going on filter off for example and looking at like how can i how can i connect people that way yeah good question so in the filter off app depending on your location you'll see all sorts of events some are public some are private if they are private you can always reach out to the organizer to join their private event if the organizer is okay with that uh, but if you are let's say a organizer of a community um, or you're just passionate about something like personal development. You could actually create your own event on the filter off app under the events tab. And it'll ask you the title, the location, uh, you can include branding. So it's, it's pretty, uh, extensive and it's free to host, uh, these events. It's well. like clubhouse except for dating with video. Exactly. I love it. Okay. So while I have you, um, here, I want to know, like, what are your dating hacks? I know that you've been doing this, uh, you know, you've been involved in dating for a really long time. Um, what do you think are some of the best dating hacks um, that ladies can kind of like start implementing? I mean, I think the most important thing is to go on video as quickly as possible. I mean, I've I've used apps and your messaging back and forth and you think they're so amazing and you're so excited to potentially meet them at some point and then i jumped on a video call and literally two minutes in i realized i don't want to be chatting like they're not a fit. <laughs> so just to save everyone time just hop on a video call as quickly as possible i mean obviously whatever is comfortable for you i don't want to like quote unquote give advice but i do recommend going on video. Like I really believe video is the best platform 
before an IRL experience. I agree. And and there's so many, like the catfishing problem online, that's one of the most common reasons why women are afraid, those sorts of experiences. And so when someone's like, I lost my phone, I don't have service, I'm out here in like, you know, wherever, um, Siberia, you know, looking for oil, um, everyone can use video. So I just have to do that as a public service announcement. It, really mm-hmm. smart women like fall for that. Um, and, and also I'm, I'm really curious what, what, uh, other apps that you recommend, like, do you, do you recommend that, that women are like on a bunch of apps at one time? Like, uh, What's the most efficient way to sort of like fill your funnel? Yeah, I mean, so again, in terms of, I don't want to promote other applications per se, but <laughs> right. like, but yeah, I mean, feel free to try. Um, I think what you what you see in the online dating industry, it's not a winner takes all industry. Right. Um, people may be on three different dating apps. And that's very common. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And oftentimes you'll see people on multiple apps. I think the nice thing with filter off, it really is an experience. Um, so you really can't be doing it on the toilet. Um, yes. apps You can be. So um, yeah. And I think it also weeds out the individuals that are actually not looking to meet. Filter off is all about people that are serious about actually meeting and connecting. Um, the issue with these typical traditional swipe apps, um, it's been reported that about 50% oftentimes are not even actually looking to meet up. Um, oh, it, probably, yeah. it probably is higher percentage at younger audiences, yep. a younger demographic, but I mean, no one wants to waste their time. And unfortunately, a lot of these swipe apps are a waste of time. But if you want to use them, try out a few, see what works, see what doesn't, and then go from there. I think that's so true because when you're talking about doing video right from the get go, you're you're already starting out with a willingness uh, to be vulnerable and to be seen. And I think on a lot of the apps, you're right; it can just be entertainment. There's no intention sometimes to even meet. Um, and the other thing that I really love about what you said earlier, Zach, is that on our campus we call it pseudo intimacy, right? Where you meet someone online and you just start texting back and forth. And there's just the, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Or it can go into these long ass, you know, like conversations that should be had in person. Um, And then you're right. You meet them and you're just like, no. In fact, when I was single, I this was, uh, you know, many years ago, but I met someone online and I was texting with them and I was in L.A. and this person was in New York and uh, there was no video apps or Zoom and I flew all the way there and after like 20 minutes I was like get me the hell <laughs> out of this situation yeah but I had convinced myself in my mind that he was like my soulmate because we had all these deep freaking conversations so like this avoids that pseudo intimacy like immediately and there's a an assumed yes so you don't have to like ask for a video date it's just part of it yeah exactly and if you do use another app like i said try to convert uh to the video experience the only unfortunate thing oftentimes is you have to ex- on, a, on a swipe app you have to exchange personal information like phone numbers or instagram um so it, if that person ends up being a creep that could always be um, kind of crappy. Um, but yeah, just be safe, be smart and, uh, just try to get on video and see what they're all about. How are, how is, and I'm just curious, like technology wise, or maybe it's the same, but I know a lot of the, um, the apps and online dating sites now, like installed video features. Um, how is yours different? Like, is it easier to use? Is it like, what makes it is, if anything, is it different than any of those sort of like the panic during the pandemic, they're like, let me add a video chat. <laughs> How is yours different if it is? Yeah, I mean, with these video features um, that other swipe apps offer, um, it's more so an afterthought to the core product. You're still swiping. Um, and then after this long conversation, like you mentioned, then you proceed, hey, do you want to hop on a video call? If that even happens. Um, with Filter Off, it's a video first experience from the events perspective. In terms of the matchmaking service, we do set you up on, we give you three matches a day. And if you're both interested in one another, 
we put you in a chat to then coordinate your own time to video chat. You have five days to set up a video chat or the match will expire. And when you do jump on a video call, it is also a quick three minute speed date, same sort of experience as the event. Um, but yeah, so again, video, the core product is video versus more so an afterthought. Right. Like, yeah. And bless all those people who did that so that we could transition into you creating filter off. This has been so interesting. I am, I'm loving what you're doing and I think it, um, it really speaks to the the belief that I have that that good people that are actually looking for relationships want to kind of cut through the crap uh, and come to a place where they can uh, bypass that crap uh, and really make connections in an efficient way and and make dating actually fun. And I love building community and meeting cool p- people along the way. Um, so I appreciate you being here, Zach. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me, Marnie. Okay, really let me ask it. you one last question. What's, yeah. the, what's the last time your mom called you Zachary? What did you do? Um, so the last time, it's a good question. Well, anytime she would call me Zachary, um, obviously that was, I loved it. I mean, it's my mom, so <laughs> um, always had a good relationship, so. Yeah, That's awesome. I met my daughter's boyfriend. He, I know him as Nate. And when I met his parents and we had dinner, they called him Nathan. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Can I call you Nathan? Um, all right, Zach. The only <laughs> other person that ever I was I was cool with calling me Zachary was any like ex-girlfriend I had. So that's that's the only other opportunity for people to call me Zachary. Uh, I love it. Well, we will Any call you, we will call you Zach, uh, Zach, yeah. and we are so excited about uh, filter off and you taking the time to uh, tell us about this an amazing opportunity and to remind people get over your shit about video chats whether you use filter off or not ask for those dates people who want to get on the path to relationship will say yes and you can't say uh, you can't say the wrong thing to the right guy. Uh, Zach, it's been a pleasure. Ladies, don't forget, date with some damn dignity. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel 100% seen, heard, and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now, and you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at Dating with Dignity, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP, that's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com, and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes, and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista and let's talk soon.